AI, for a business leader, AI is your worst nightmare. So people will treat AI like a calculator. And that is a big mistake. You're falling into the trap there of anthropomorphism. That's giving credit to the system for having intelligence. And it really doesn't. Saying every time it drives down the road and ends up in a ditch, we're saying, no, wrong answer. Right. Do it again. And that problem will will emerge itself as a big issue because only the biggest companies, or rather the companies with the deepest pockets, will be able to afford how to do that. Uh, we've been talking about artificial intelligence for as long as I've lived. I'm Eva AI, your new digital girlfriend. Audio recordings of conversations that haven't ever happened, sowing seeds of mistrust. Of the mayor was able to speak a variety of languages, including Mandarin, Cantonese, and Spanish, using deepfake tech. It will lead to increasing distrust in media or politicians. The most fundamental point is to make sure we keep the human in the loop. So it seems, uh, Simon, from the first episode, that this stuff is so uh, mystical and uh, complicated that if you're going to use it, you just you just need to have faith. Um, and for those who want to go beyond just faith and actually try and you know grasp the subject, I think it'd be quite helpful if people understand what is AI actually, um, and actually what it isn't <laughs> so yeah good question ai for a business leader ai is your worst nightmare <laughs> uh, everyone's talking about it expectations are sky high you're nowhere on the plan it's going to cost you a huge amount to get it implemented i remember the days when i had a slide rule and log tables and then calculators got invented and it was a big furore about calculators you know, would they destroy our mm. mental arithmetic? Mm. Could we use them in exams and so on? So is this just another one of those? It's like a big calculator or is there something else going on? So people will treat AI like a calculator. And that is a big mistake. Calculators and most of the systems applications we interact with every day in, in business, they are developed like a calculator. Someone has thought about what you're going to give it. You know, you, you input a form on a on a a web page what then happens has been programmed it's been written line by line by a software engineer who's thinking about what should happen and what you get as a result ai works completely differently uh, no one has programmed that function by hand what's happened is we've given an algorithm data and said you learn it is it's machine learning uh, we've asked it to look at examples and then create the function that will take your input and give a result. And that function is a black box. Is it something like you, as a child grows up, you give, you give the child the tools, the language, if you like, um, and then you say, use this to go off and explore the world and work out how it works. Is it a bit like that? Yeah, that's, that, that's exactly how it is. Um, uh, a, a bit like not giving someone a fish, but teaching them how to fish. You know, we're, we're giving them, we're giving the system the capability to interrogate data and draw some conclusions from that, so it can do tasks over and over again. We haven't said how it should do that task. We've just enabled it to look at a, a huge number of examples uh, of what it would mean to do that task. Okay, so. The term machine learning is used a lot. That, that's what we're talking about. And what role do we play, if any, in the AI software doing its own learning? So, so we've been through already a couple of generations of AI. First generation where we're being really specific about what we want. Um, we're showing an algorithm, uh, thousands of pictures of cats, and we're saying, this is a cat. For each one, we say, that's a cat. So we showed a new image of a cat, and it'll say with some confidence, yeah, that's a cat. It's a bit like the ones I've seen before. We're being very specific uh, about what we want out of it. What sort of AI is that? Has that got a definition? That, that, that's supervised, supervised learning, okay. supervised machine learning. And that's been hugely successful. That underpins 
a lot of what is around today in AI that is actually productive and useful. Image recognition. Um, Facial recognition. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The sort of thing I've got on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so very, very specific in what it's doing. Okay. Okay. And then what's the, what's the step after that? So there are other techniques uh, like unsupervised learning where we're just showing data to an algorithm and asking it, what do you see? What patterns do you see? Uh, is there something interesting in here? Uh, and that can be really useful for classifying, uh, categorizing things. Um, for example? So, so take uh, cybersecurity, uh, networks, um, people trying to keep the IT systems of a business safe. What they're doing is looking for anomalies. They're looking for problems. Uh, so we might have an algorithm which learns what normal looks like, normal traffic of um, uh messages and interactions across computers in a business say in a large bank and then something odd happens uh you get a problem and it it knows that uh that's just different it's a different pattern it, it's classifying something as anomalous fraud detection in financial transactions the same kind of thing is happening uh, we're just relying on the ability of an algorithm to look at data at scale learn something about it and then categorize things, classify things in different mm. ways and give us useful answers. And is it going beyond that? Is it going, because I can sort of work out how you'd program that, you know, but is it going beyond that? Is it using some sort of reasoning to say that this is not right and then thinking, you know, what might have happened, where it might have come from? So they're doing the sort of work that if the human had the time, they be able to do themselves? I, th I think you're falling into the trap there of anthropomorphism. That's giving credit to the system for having intelligence, and it really doesn't. Mm. What it does have the capability uh, to do is to look at data at massive scale and understand patterns and put its hand up when something different happens. It doesn't know what that is or what the significance of it, but it can label it. Uh, and it can bring it to our attention. So using that example then, at that moment when something dangerous might be happening, what's the AI tool going to do? Is it going to st stop it, kill it, or is it going to talk to a person and mm -hmm. go, I think you need to have a look at this. <laughs> I wake him up at three o'clock yeah. in the morning or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the safest thing is, this is uh, an assistant, it's a tool, it's a help, it's support for someone who's now going to take action for someone who's going to close down a bit of that com computer network, um, who's going to prevent that transaction from happening. Um, but what we really want is for the computer to take action, uh, to tie that understanding into action itself, um, either because things are happening at a scale or a pace that don't allow the human in the loop. Right now, that can really only happen where we've got a high degree of confidence that the right action is going to be taken or the risk of getting it wrong isn't so critical uh, that we're going to really regret taking that action. If we think about autonomous vehicles, i.e. driverless cars, say, is that a combination of the two things you've said, which is it's gone through the process itself by being there when the car's been driven, so it's learned a lot about everything that could possibly go wrong, and... Uh, secondly, it's, as you call it, pattern matching. So it now has got a reasonable idea that the person, the thing that's stepped out in front of me is a person and not a dog, in which case I might actually take, you know, different, different reactive action. Yeah. If that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, is that auton fair? Yeah. Autonomous driving is, is, is a great example of all, all these different aspects of AI in play at once. Um, supervised learning, image recognition. We show an algorithm lots of traffic lights so it can recognize traffic lights. Um, we can use unsupervised learning, just that general ability to look for problems, things that are different. Is something different happening? Maybe I better take a different kind of action. But also a third term, uh, which will introduce reinforcement learning. Um, and reinforcement learning is really interesting um, because that's about... Uh, letting the system take action and then giving it a reward and saying that was good or bad. 
And there are people experimenting with autonomous driving that connect the camera that's showing the car, uh, what's around it, directly to the inputs of the steering and the brakes. So we're not trying to recognize images or train it to recognize a dog. We're just letting it drive around the road, hit something, go off the road, and then say, no, that, that, that's the wrong answer. Okay. Do it again right. and do it again and again and again until it behaves correctly. But it's working out those repetitions. You don't have to keep. And it's it. working right. out okay. what 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 it's in what uh, it's working out in its environment. This sort of situation demands this kind of action. Supervised learning, pretty stable, pretty mature, and that's all about uh, recognizing things. Yeah, I show you yet another cat. You say it's a cat. I show you a traffic light. Yeah, that's a traffic light. Really, right. really useful. Uh, unsupervised learning great tool to have in the toolbox is something different. I'm going to show you this. Has anything changed since the last time I showed you anything like this? Cybersecurity, um, recognizing issues, recognizing anomalies. This is just different. You want to do something about this. So it's, it, they're basically, it's the, the unsupervised, unsupervised bit means it is doing the learning itself without you having to think about it. It's just learning what does normal look like? What should these things look like? And I'm right. going to tell That's you if something then. different. Really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, Reinforcement learning, a uh, little bit scary. We, we let the system take action uh, and we tell it whether it did good or not. Um, and that is, uh, that's an area where there's a lot of resource required because just think how many times you're gonna have to get it to do that task again and again until it gets good at it. And we are in interacting in this process a bit, i.e. we the human. Not, not we the we're, software. We're setting the goals. We're, we're saying what good looks like. Every time it does something, every time it drives down the road and ends up in a ditch, we're saying, no, wrong answer. Right. Do it again. This is what good looks like. Good or looks every, like. Every time in a business you're getting an answer that you don't quite like, going back to AI telling you, I might be wrong, so please check. The yeah. human is going, actually, I don't quite like that. We're going to have another go. Yeah, yeah. You're, di you, you, you're directing it based on the results okay. that you get. That's number three. That's number three. Reinforcement learning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's a fourth example, which is the thing that you know, we, we've talked about before, uh, which has really caused a lot of excitement uh, around the possibilities for AI, which is generative AI. Uh, and that works in a slightly different way. Uh, all the examples we talked about before, you show the system a large amount of data and you get an answer back. You get a, uh, an answer. It's a cat or you get an action. Uh, with generative AI, you show the system a lot of data and what you get back is the ability to generate data. It's a bit like what you put in. Okay, so that's, I don't quite get that. I mean, I, I'm sure what you're saying is correct. I'm not challenging technically what you said. But to, to me as a user, I'm not generating data. I'm just asking it a question. My question mm -hmm. could be a, you know, five words. I've done nothing. <laughs> so what is generative AI <laughs> in that concept, context? So, so, so the fourth example, generative AI, we've, we've trained the system as before. We've shown it a huge amount of data. In the case of large language models, we've shown it the what, internet. Word, words. Every, everything Letters on Letters and words every text, and sentences. Every text, document, all of Wikipedia very contentious of course okay. um, and then for the end user once they're using that they might ask a question what they get back isn't a single answer what they get back is more text uh, and it's all based on language generation language understanding and now image understanding and video understanding so generative is I can get because of all the work it's done and it's accumulated uh, something which you've called, as an example, a language model. I, I under, doesn't understand, but it's worked out how everything relates. I can ask it a simple question, and it will then generate for me an answer, which could be a report, or that, it could be a series of options for me to think about. That's for, it, for exactly. Example. We've shown it so many examples of how words relate to each okay. other. It can now create new examples, which just happen to look like 
a Shakespeare play written in the style of The Economist. Magazine. Okay, even though it has absolutely no idea what it's no writing. No idea what these all. things mean. So it doesn't understand what it's writing, doesn't understand the words and what they mean, but it's accumulated so much data, it can produce something that looks like it can. That's it. Right, that's pretty scary. That is very scary, actually. But we'll come back to it. Final question, uh, Simon, is this sounds like it needs a lot of computer storage. Can you give us an example of the sort of relative storage, a task that we might understand because it happens in our day-to-day life, that this sort of stuff is going to demand? Sure, sure. uh, Generative AI, the storage, the compute demands are just off the scale. But even bringing it back to one of the more traditional AI techniques like image recognition, supervised learning, uh, one of the really valuable uses of that is screening. So uh, pathology, uh, taking images that have been created, you know, x-rays or other kind of scans, um, and allowing a machine to identify a potential problem. So an individual image, you know, say, say you take a picture with a, a camera, that's you know, maybe 10 megabytes. To get a high quality scan of a slide for pathology, to store that digitally might be a gigabyte. So how many images do you need to train uh, a function that's going to accurately, reasonably accurately with AI, come up with? with AI. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, millions. You're going to need millions of images. You're quickly into terabytes, petabytes. And, and what's the relativity storage. between the two? Sorry? What's the relativity? I mean, how, many, how many times more storage do you need you know, as an idea? So, so, so you need hundreds of thousands times the storage so, okay. than if you're just going to supply pathologists right. with accurate images. That is a problem, isn't it? And that problem will, will emerge itself as a big issue because only the biggest companies, or rather the companies with the deepest pockets, will be able to afford how to do that. And that That's will mean a lot of other companies actually won't be able to do it. Yes or no? That's right. So Nick, uh, Simon has said there are different types of artificial intelligence at play in the world that do different things, operate in different ways. You're, you're, uh, you founded a business, you're running that business now and you're introducing artificial intelligence into your software capability. Mm -hmm. Um, As you do that, what's the, you know, what's one of the most important considerations for you? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating time to be in this space um, and the, the most important thing for us is how do we leverage the power um, but ensure that A, the human's in the loop um, and, and B, they retain accountability. Um, so AI is not always right, um, it's not 100% accurate and whilst that might be okay in the consumer world where there's lots of experimentation and some really cool toys to play with, uh, in, in business um, accuracy matters and you're trying to achieve real world outcomes so there's got to be an interplay there's got to be a way for people to direct the um, AI to contribute insights to the AI to feedback on what it produces and to ultimately make the decision um, that you're trying to get to in in that business situation and and that will make AI better because it will learn it will track the outcome and it will learn what works. So, so you, uh, if I get this right, you're having to do two things. You're having to create the artificial intelligence engine, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second, you're having to create a layer of capability which will include some sort of human interface so the human can, can have a conversation with the AI and you both learn together until you've reached a point where the human is saying, I'm, a, I'm about there. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's a, it's a collaboration that we're trying to get to. And ultimately, um, that's how business decisions will get made in the future. Mm. And, the, and the winners will be those who pay attention to the role of the human in, mm. this, okay. in this future. So the idea that the computer goes off and does the answer and then you're kind of dumb and lazy and go, okay, this is the answer. That sounds, A, very, very unsatisfying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and secondly, actually quite dangerous. So what you're doing from a human point of view, but also as a business outcome point of view, mm. is um, it seems quite important. Absolutely. I mean, 
yeah, the danger is we get lazy, and and what we're what we need is a co-pilot, not an autopilot. 